Hi, Pottery Peeps. So this um, voiceover will be interesting for both of us. So what I'm doing here is that I am drilling the holes so that there's going to be a piece of uh, rebar pounded into the ground that will be covered by a PVC pipe that everything is going to be threaded on. Think of threading a necklace or a bracelet just on a mammoth scale. So um, I did f figure out math wise, uh, I grabbed a cookie cutter that is uh, 1.5 inches in diameter and I'm using that as a guide not to be smaller than that. So when I, um, and I've done this before, if you go back, I'll link it in the description. If you do the um, watch the tree of life urn that I made for Wendy, uh, I did this exact same thing where I take a dowel I put it down through the middle just to make sure my holes line up straight. It actually wouldn't be a bad idea to have a small level in your studio. Um, I have one in my garage if I need one that's really close and I'll go grab it. But you know what? I think my studio needs to have its own level, uh, especially for things like this, because there is a lot um, you want to make sure vertically that um, it's level. So I use this dowel to go through both those holes to kind of guide me to make sure that I'm putting the holes in the right places and uh, keeping them, you know, almost said square, but you know, it's a circle. So no square. <laughs> okay, so I'm getting all of that and then I've got to make the holes bigger. So using that cookie cutter as a guide and the dowel to make sure that um, I keep them centered and bigger. Also working on a sponge with a piece like this that does not have a bottom is ideal. So I actually use, I, I could call it a sponge, it's not a sponge, it's a cushion. It's just a cushion that I got like at Joann's or something like that so that I could protect pieces that uh, you don't want on a hard surface and um, highly recommend that if your studio doesn't have cushions or big sponges to put your pieces on get one because you'll be surprised how often you use it also it works out uh, really handy for doing any type of press plates that kind of thing on a side note it is five minutes to midnight. I am a night owl and I knew that I could not do this voiceover in the house and it just seemed appropriate that I come out to the studio to do it because, you know, this is where things are created and uh, I needed everybody in bed to do it because, you know, I'm going to be talking to myself here for 20 minutes, which is, well, I don't have any problem talking to myself. I talk to myself and I talk to pottery and... I talk to animals and I talk to my flowers. <laughs> so that's not a problem I have. I probably have, you know, the problem where, you know, I need to be quiet. <laughs> you can imagine I was not a quiet child. Nope, not a quiet adult. Yeah, there's a lot of cleanup, obviously. probably spend more time cleaning up pottery pieces than you do actually making them. But it makes all the difference in the world to spend the time to clean up. This is the base. I threw that off the hump with um, the very first video. Through all the little pieces, actually some big pieces, and uh, so we're going to make sure that it's going to fit. And it wasn't shown on camera, but this piece has dried out. Both of these pieces are leather hard. Um, do not put, um, I recommend you don't put together these uh, ring vases or donut vases without the donut itself being fairly leather hard. It needs to be able to not squish itself when you do this. And the base that you put it on doesn't squish 
And so I took that, um, the base, oh, there's Cass, <laughs> sitting there giving me company. Um, I took that base and um, I dipped it in water a couple of times to soften it up a little bit because it was just a little bit too uh, leather hard. So I've marked it and I'm going to score the crap out of it and add lots and lots of slip. Also, you'll notice that I um, squished that base into an oval shape so that it would fit the donut. Another reason why I had to soften it up. Since this piece will be outside, it will be in the elements. One thing I've been conscious of is that I do not want any water to get inside of it. So when I put it together, when I put pieces together, um, I want to make sure there's no place that it's going to crack, that it's got a solid connection. And then when I actually put the pieces together, I will silicone them to make sure that no water gets inside. Because if water gets inside, we're here in Utah, about 4,000, a little over 4,000 um, feet altitude. So we get cold in the winter. Well, not cold like I know cold, but um, cold for Utah. <laughs> <laughs> For the people that live here, they think it's cold. But once you've experienced 75 below zero, yeah. <laughs> the kind of winters we get here, I think the coldest I've ever seen it was 10 below for a day or two. And this last winter, I don't think it got below zero, or if it did, I was asleep at the time. So I do want to make sure no water gets in there because water will freeze and ice will expand and my piece will break. And I really don't think once this piece is put together, I don't think I'll be taking it apart. So double checking, making sure straight. When I do these um, ring bases, I look at it from all sides, make sure it's um, level. And uh, sometimes it's a good idea to, when you're drying them, to prop them. Some of them, if, they're, if, if they don't have a good foundation, a good solid foundation, sometimes when they dry, they'll lean. And you won't notice that lean until the kiln. So that whole memory thing, you'll have a beautiful piece that has quite the lean to it. So putting the top on, again, I am making sure I've got a really, really good connection. I spend a lot of time standing back and looking at it because I really had no clue where I was going. Okay, time for some cleanup, so we're going to speed up. You could add a coil to this, and I have done that, but if you'll notice, I've taken that little um, finger tool that I love, really pushed the clay in from the top and the bottom, into the donut. And before I get started, I'm gonna clean up some of my scraps, put them in my reclaim. Um, when I'm working on a project like this, I try to keep my area as clean as I can so that little pieces of clay don't attach themselves or I don't set it down on things like, and get it dirty. Now this caused me a little bit of a problem. I had pulled handles and uh, I had to stop for a little while. I had to go do an IV for my husband. Oh, I still get the willies every time I have to do that. <laughs> Three times a day, guys. Ooh. Um, yeah, I was not meant to be a medical professional or anything close to that. Anyway, my handles were too soft. So you're gonna see I, I had issues here. 
and I should have waited, but you know what it's like when you're in the zone and you just want to get something done because you want to see um, see it finished and you want to get on to the next piece. <laughs> and so I went ahead and did it and I really should have waited because they did give me some problems because the um, handles were really, really floppy. And uh, it would have been a lot easier putting them on if they had been drier. More leather hard, they would have gone on a lot easier than they did. So usually when I pull a handle, I you know, you saw how I uh, flatten out that top part. Then I take a dowel, I keep talking about dowels. You guys need to get some dowels. If you don't have dowels, they're very, very handy. And I push that handle on really, really, I've never had a handle crack off a mug. Since I started doing them this way years ago, never had a handle um, crack. And so I will really push it on with that dowel. Then I spend time to smooth it on, clean it up, make sure that um, don't have any extra slip because a lot of times your handle's not actually cracking, it's the slip that's cracking. But you can see how floppy that handle is. Ah, awful. I know better. But then I take the bottom here and I flatten that out and I get it super, super thin because I'm gonna curl it. When you curl something, especially in clay, you um, coax it into the curl. You go back and forth and wiggle, 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 and then make the curl. And I'm going to score and attach it. And if you hear any background wind, we're having quite the storm. When I do attach a handle, I do wiggle it on that bottom part because um, I'm not pressing it with the dowel. On my mugs, I usually press it with a dowel. I did show this same type of handle that I'm going to do here um, on my pressed flower hand-built tripod mugs. I don't know what it's under. Maybe I'll link that too, if I remember. I'm getting quite the collection of videos. It's kind of cool. More smoothing down that clay. Yep, lots of that. You can see how floppy that handle is. Ugh, just sad, sad, sad. As a teacher, do not do that. <laughs> it's just problems. <laughs> what is that? Um, do as I say, not as I... No. Yep, do as I say, not as I do. Yep. That's pretty much me. My kids will tell you that too. So this second handle was even wetter than the first handle. And yet, what did I do? Yep, I did. I put it on. Crazy. So I sped this up because, you know, second handle, <laughs> Same as the first, <laughs> so, but yeah, I have to get um, a little bit of help with this one because it is so floppy. They don't quite match. They were the same length, but yeah, see the little sponge? If you notice, if you're looking at it this way, it looks like a little girl with pigtails. <laughs> Just notice that. All right, so I'm adding little flippies. Um, I just take a, um, Ball of clay, flatten it out, and uh, press it right above that um, little um, little. Oh, I can't think of the word right now. Where I just rolled it up, and then I'm going to make the flower here. And I do have another video that's going to be later for the piece that's going to go inside the donut to cover the pipe that it's going to be sitting on. I do show this more in detail, and I think I did show this detail or this type of flower petal 
on that same tripod mug. But I take um, a ball of clay, flatten it out kind of into an oval, and then I pinch one end. And so I am going to put, I'm going to score that area above the handle and uh, add those. It's a fun little detail. I've got a couple of other videos if you go into the fairy houses that show handmade um, flowers out of clay. I've already decided um, my next one, because you know there's going to be a next one, is going to have to have some more details like this. I just really enjoy these details with the flowers, the sculpted flowers. Then I take um, a tool, I'm taking the back of my paintbrush and pressing that petal into the ring vase. I've scored and slipped them, but of course I'm putting on very wet clay to a leather hard piece. This will get covered in plastic. In fact, um, it's still covered in plastic and it's almost blown dry. It's been covered since last Saturday and today is well, we are after midnight, so today is Sunday, it's Father's Day, June, what day was Father's Day? The 18th? I don't know, I never know what day, I barely know what day of the week it is. I'm self-employed, I work every day. Well, I don't work, I play. I play every day. Best job in the world, I tell ya. I don't know how I got so lucky. So here I'm um, searching for some stamps. because I um, decided I needed some stamp detail too. Actually, maybe I wasn't searching for some stamps. I don't know what I was searching for. <laughs> I know I stamped later on, so maybe that's what I was thinking I was doing. Who knows? Just making more flower petals. Smoothing out those edges that crack. You just smooth them with a sponge. I always have a damp sponge next to me. Cleans off my hands, cleans off my brush. Um, I can always wet my fingers and uh, smooth out the clay. I'm gonna do the same to this side. And if you'll notice the one that I finished, I put a ball of clay there for like the center of a flower. If you haven't made a donut on the wheel, try it. It's super fun. It's one of my favorite things to throw. I think I've mentioned that before. It's just a unique shape. It's challenging. And even if you think, you know, I can't do it, don't. I always tell my students, don't ever say can't. You'll learn more um, by failing than you were, will by success. So, Give yourself the permission to fail in the studio because it's a great learning tool. I don't know um, who said it, um, but uh, somebody said that if you're not failing often enough in the studio, you're not pushing yourself. And I absolutely love that. I've been at this since 1983 and uh, seriously for the last 20 years because, you know, had four kids early on, poor college students. And uh, I tell you, I still fail. And to me, it's a badge of honor when I fail. It's like, all right, look at me push myself. So here, that's the stamp. I knew I'd found a stamp at some point, and I stamped a design in there. So this does two things, adds a design, but it also compresses that seam even more make sure that it's well connected.
I'm also using my finger with it inside to help press against because by this time this piece has dried out significantly and I was having actual trouble getting the design to press in. So I also knew that if I press too hard, um, I could crack it. So a little stressful. So had to do it up here too. And I didn't think about it until now, but looking at this, I got to somehow unlook this. <laughs> Not only does it look like a little girl with pigtails, but now that I added the flowers, those are her bows. <laughs> they are pigtails. By the time the whole piece is put together, I probably won't see that, I hope. <laughs> Maybe I'm punchy. It's been a long day. So now I'm looking at it, trying to figure out what else it needs. Okay, pottery peeps. So, um, as it often happens, when you think of pieces finished, it's not. It needed more stuff. I added the floral medallion to the collar of the topper piece. And once I did that, I needed to add it to the ring vase or donut vase. I also, looking at the flowers, I also added more petals to the flowers and some more trim details. And I probably <laughs> needed to stop there. Um, right now I'm kind of happy with it. <laughs> Not much more I can do to it because it's almost um, bone dry. But um, at the end of this video, I took a picture with the topper sitting on top very carefully on top of the ring vase so stay tuned for that uh, there is a piece going between the ring vase and the topper a round orb piece but it's in the kiln firing right now because it was bone dry and i loaded the kiln tonight i did measure it with the topper piece sitting on the ring vase and uh it was 30 inches so i'm well on my way um to be i want it over i want it at least my height which is five feet six i don't remember how many inches that is i just know that um what six feet is 72 inches <laughs> so that's what i'm going on so anyway that's um the end of this video and uh hopefully the um voiceover didn't bother you too much it was new for me and uh, we will see you in the next one. I'm super excited to see all of these pieces coming together.